comment? Which you have to uh, deliver to your customer when you are going to uh, handle a project, right? Right. Okay. I'll, let me go to the next page. Yeah, I request to all of you guys to mute your voices so that such a card can handle it proper way. Engineer Samir, it's my request to be mute your voice. No, it will something uh, time to you know to get these So be patient. Okay, no problem. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no problem. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, uh, you can, the, can you see this? Uh, the title is uh, of the second page is document approval record, right? Yeah. So here is a brief table. Uh, whenever you are going to uh, make a document, it it will have uh, the name of the person who built it. The title, uh, like uh, it's a designation. Title means designation. Like uh, he's a lead engineer or uh, what kind of uh, is the system engineer and the authorized signature will, be, uh, signature will be on the left so the department and the company so this should be the second page of a, an industrial project for a document which we are going to design this is a functional design specification okay let me go to the third page so here you will have a version record of a document it's, this document status code heading is in front of you yeah, we can see it. Okay. So just confirm me because a uh, screen usually take time to update itself. Uh, I'm here so just to confirm you about the things. You can ask any question during the presentation. So this basically is, uh, I'm just giving for the time being the document introduction. Later on we will uh, discuss the structure. Okay. So here is the table of contents uh, just look at the structure uh, the type uh, this structure title clause number 1.1.2 dot one dot two. so basically this uh, functional design specification has been divided into five sections right and the first section is basically to lay down the rules and responsibility and the sco scope of the work the scope of the work in a project management history is a very important tool uh, where you have to fit the boundaries, what you have to deliver and what the customer expects from you and what you expect from the customer. It has to be clearly dictated in these areas. And the second section describes some technical requirements pertaining to project. Third section outlines the control function and the requirement which is basically a PLC part, programming part, and some other interfacing part. So fourth section contains the HMI, Fine. that is functional requirements. Fifth section is basically is manufacturing enterprise solution function requirements. And this document is going to be prepared by a control system engineer. So I guess you are the people who is going to develop this kind of document in future if you have such kind of job, right? That's right. Okay, anyone has question until now? No, I'm okay. Okay, that's great. So the in intended uh, audience, basically the people like project manager, technical manager, control manager, and the maintenance personnel, right? And the basic goal of the document, to there is a mixer in the industry, it's an ice cream factory, and uh, the basic goal of this project was to increase the throughput. This mixer is basically initially being operated uh, manually, right? And uh, this mixer is going to be controlled automatically, and you are going to add your value being a control system in the year. You are going to go this drive and make this next as to work on as automatic, right? 
So, Article 1.2.2 clearly dictates the scope. That is uh, just saying you are going to develop a project for the mixer, which includes batching, mixing, and the discharge of the freezing to the freezing generator, refrigerator. The control system is basically developed using a PLC as the basis of the control and the operator will interact with the system through the HMI. So this is the basic scope. And uh, being a, a control system engineer, you are supposed to also lay down what should be included, like which, what things are in the scope and what things are basically out of the scope. So in the out of the scope, the responsibility of a client is to deliver hardware, engineering design for the electrical and the hardware installation. These are all by the client. So it is clearly in Article 2, 1 dot 2 dot Okay? That's fine. Okay. So these are the basic requirements in Article 1 dot 3. It's basically a design project. You will deliver the documentation, integrate the project with the hardware and the software. You will make a startup and commission this project and train the operator which are available on site for this automation job because uh, they were used to do it uh, not manually because uh, they are handling it by uh, from the experience. From now onward, this project will be automated and uh, the purpose will be fulfilled by increasing the throughput of the system. So, system integrator will create functional requirement. This is the first document you are going to deliver, which I am showing to you right now on your screen. Is it okay? Yes, it's okay. Yes. Okay. So, the second uh, thing, drawings. Basically, the p and I drawings are not the responsibility of a system integrator. But sometime, if the project is small, like this industrial project, then what you have to do, you have to uh, bring the PNID by yourself. Like uh, you are uh, summarizing uh, some kind of uh, process which operator tells you and you have to draw some kind of PNID. Then PLC programming, safety acceptance test documents and so on. So, okay, let me go through uh, now to the last page. So this is a PID of the of a system. Is it clear to you? Can you see a PID on your screen? Yeah, I mean, we can see it. We can see it. Yes. Okay. Let I me mean, make a little zoom. Uh, can uh, someone see uh, what is? Uh, but zooming might not. Just can someone uh, tell what is the? What is what you can see on your screen? Yeah, we are seeing the picture right at the moment, and uh, the things are not too much clear over here. You need to zoom up the things, and that's all you need to. Do. Okay. Okay. Now, what you can see? Now we can see uh, the middle area, the makeup tunnel. Okay. One thousand. So this is basically a tank where you have. Uh, to mix all the items and uh, put all the items. For example, uh, here, here, here on the left you can see it's a temperature transmitter. That's fine. It's named as ET100. Yeah. Maybe a little bit blur for you, right? That's okay. And you can eliminate that one. Okay, no problem. On the top, uh, can you see my hand on, on the presentation? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, it's just left on the IT automation um, Skype ID. Uh, here it is basically on the top of tank. There is a level switch which will uh, let you know that the level in the tank is full, and uh, you have to uh, stop the filling and all the other items. So here you can see on the bottom there are weighing scale, right? WT100. There are two 
strain gauges which are going to transfer the weight of the whole tank to your system in the PLC. Right? Right. Okay. Here you can see on the left top, this is, uh, what, what is the symbol of this one? Anyone, anyone, no problem. Okay. Here, here. It's in advance. Yes, this is the wall. This is the uh, it's a, uh, like Yeah, it's, uh, you, everyone perfectly um, said that. Uh, Just valve valve for one of the valve, we just put in the supply of water into that tank. And uh, here you have a hooper, hooper bin. Here you have to add uh, the hand mixture additions. And the right side, you can see there are two more valves, right? Yes. Uh, can you see uh, these two valves on the right side? Yeah, we can see it. Yes. Yeah, we can see. Okay, the first the first valve is basically for uh, milk supply, and the bottom one is for the fractals. Like uh, you, when you are going to make a mixture for an uh, ice cream, then you need to add some uh, sweetener in it to the fractals. Okay. So this is basically a small ID, and here on the top of the tank you can see there is a Agitator motor, right? Yeah. Yeah. And when, uh, just look at the bottom of the tank. 